Hi, welcome to another edition of Visual Perspectives. Today we will talk about role clarity. Role clarity can be a major issue in many companies and as a result of that you may have other problems. So the central issue is role clarity. Because of role clarity you may have issues such as stress. Employees may get stressed. This yields to poor communication, yields to perhaps lack of prioritization, it causes operational inefficiencies, there is lack of alignment with the strategy, and many other issues. So if we can solve the role clarity issue, then we can hopefully address or about 80% of the challenges within an organization. So in this session, we'll figure out or we'll talk through how one can take a structured approach to do so. Basically, there are three things to consider, and those are function, processes, and organizational structure. We'll take these one by one. Let's look at function. In any organization or any business unit for, a, for that matter, work may come into the unit, and then at the, at the end, work may be delivered. Something is coming in and something is being delivered. In this process, there are different things that goes on in the organization, different activities. So let's mark these activities as these circles. Now, there may be too many activities to consider, in the or sometimes even in the order of thousands. So it makes sense to to consider these activities in some sort of a logical grouping. And that logical grouping usually corresponds to um, similar things that go on within a department. So let's say we logically group these activities and so on, and these activities and so on. But the problem is that in grouping it this way, you might find that there are some activities that are overlapping and some work that is overlapping. So let's say we have some overlap there and some overlap here. In a perfect world, if this overlap did not occur, then um, you would potentially have no problem, or that much of a problem. Because if this overlap was not there, then these groups of activities can be done by a department, department one, and these groups can be done by a department, department two. But these overlaps do exist. So what do we do about it? And that's where the role clarity comes in. Our goal is to somehow talk through these overlapping activities to make sure that they're not overlapping anymore. So in this case, after we figure this out, perhaps we can reach a non-overlapping set of activities. I should warn you that such an exercise is not trivial. It takes a while because everybody needs to understand uh, the definitions of the activity, what activities are going on, and so on and so forth. There are some activities which we don't have to spend too much time or the team doesn't have to spend too much time on. For example, that maybe there will be no questions about who does that. On the other hand, activities such as the one that I that we mark here may be um, may have to be talked about in more detail. So let's say we did talk through and resolve the overlaps and this is what we have. Now we have to talk through a process. How does a process fit into the place? A process, as you know, is simply a sequence of these activities. So for example, I may have a process that touches that activity, goes here, touches that one, that one, that one, that one, and goes through. You might have another process that starts here, goes here, goes here, goes here, goes here, and goes through. So a process is nothing but a stringing of these activities. Again, just like activities, you may have a few hundred processes or um, 
a smaller number of processes usually, but it may be in the hundreds in a large company. So we don't want to spend inordinate amounts of tri time trying to analyze each of these processes and get to the details. The, pri the, the grouping that we just did with these, with these uh, functional areas now will come in handy because when you analyze a process, we can almost say that the people in department D1, for example, will they do their part of the process analysis. People in department D2 will there do their part of the analysis. So what happens is, let's take this um, yellow process. As we take this one, there is no need to go through and analyze every, everything along this path, along this path, because what we can do is, we can just analyze these or look for these interfaces so that when a process starts here, we just need to know what has to be fed in into this department D2. And let's call this D3 and D4. And then we need just to, we just need to know what has to be fed into D3 at this point. We need to know what has to be fed into, so I'll mark it with the X and we'll or uh, parallel lines and we need to know what has to be fed into that department d4 and what's the output that d4 is going to produce as a result we don't have to analyze the details say within d4 we just have to worry about the inputs and the outputs let's slightly redraw this picture to make it a little, little more simple so i have these activities within a department, D1, let's say, and I, I, we found out that they're non-overlapping, so I have another department with these activities, and these are D2, and I have an, yet another department, let's say this one, D3, with these activities, and we said that a process flow essentially would go in here, perhaps go in here, perhaps go in here, and that's the output that's produced. So we don't have to worry about the internal uh, flow of processes. For example, we don't have to worry about we don't have to worry about where this goes and whether it goes here and here and so on. So we keep process analysis at a higher level. So let's take that off. So using this as a basis, we already talk about so we already know about the function and the process. Now, let's add the structure to it. So an org structure typically looks like this. The question then becomes, how do we simply map um, departments to the org structure? It may be possible to simply directly map it like this. So D3 may go here. Maybe D2 goes here and D1 may go somewhere else, like here. Another thing I want to introduce at this point is the concept of a client and a service. You may notice that some departments, in this example, let's say it is D1, department D1, is, can, can be a service provider. It means it, it is actually, um, fulfills the needs of multiple other departments. So this big, the process structure is slightly wrong here. Uh, it could be that, you know, another department, D4, is actually invoking the services of D1. Let me, let's, so let's go over and talk about what service providers are and how they can be thought of. Let's say this person, let's call him Tom, wants to organize a birthday party. So for that, he may invoke the services of a few companies for food, for entertainment, perhaps we need a hall, and perhaps we need to do some decorations. Now these are companies that provide 
a service. This provides food service, this provides entertainment service, this one provides a hall, a location, and this one provides decorations. So let's say Tom is organizing a birthday party. He may interact with this company to arrange for food, he may interact with this company to arrange for a clown, and he may try to get a venue or a location, and let's say get some decorations, balloons, and so on. At the same time, we may find that another person, let's call her Mary, she is graduating, so she wants to celebrate her graduation. And she may then get food from the same food company, get a piano player from this entertainment company and get a location, and maybe she doesn't need decorations. So here on the top are the client side, and here are the service providers. If we look at it from the entertainment company's perspective, the entertainment company really caters to both Tom and Mary and whatever request that they may get in from other uh, people who want to organize parties. So they need to be able to provide a clown in one case, a piano player in another case, and something else in another case. So they can optimize their operations at their level without having to understand what the everything about Tom's birthday party, Tom's kid's birthday party, or Mary's graduation. So it is conceivable in an organization if you have departments. So let's say these are departments in an organization. D1, D2, D3, D4. These departments would be service providers and these departments D5 and D6 could be service uh, consumers or clients. So if you think of departments, they could be organized into client and service. So going back to our previous picture, we can say D1 is a, is a service provider, and let's say D3 or D4 in this case is a client that is invoking the service provider's services. And this is one way, one thing to consider while assigning departments to the org structure. If a department is a service provider, then they would have dotted line reporting or dotted line responsibility across the board. I don't want to call it as out as dotted line, but they are a service. So this is how we achieve role clarity. We have to consider function, processes, and structure. And that folks, is my perspective. Thanks for listening.